Welcome to Speaking of Grace, the weekly message podcast from the Whole Life Church in Orlando, Florida. We're a multi-ethnic, multicultural, and multi-generational congregation committed to our mission of loving people into a lifelong friendship with God. We are committed to our vision of being a church without walls, fully engaged in serving the people of our community. Thank you for joining us as we continue Speaking of Grace. I love me some good a cappella music, don't you? Undivided, right? Yeah, thank you. Man, they're great. Anybody say, uh, anybody remember they're going to be here at 7 o'clock tonight? You do need to get tickets, um, and we'll go ahead before the service is over. We'll put up on the uh, screen again uh, where to go to get those tickets, but uh, it's going to be good. Good. Merry Christmas, family. It's not too early to say that, right? Okay. I mean, I only really get uh, three, three weeks to say it, so I feel like, you know, got to take advantage of every week I can. Merry Christmas. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the chance to speak on your behalf this morning. I want you to speak. I really do. Um, I pray you get Ken Wetmore out of the way and that only you would be visible. I pray in your name. Amen. So, uh, can you think of anything that you, at one point in your life, were afraid of, but now you really love, that brings you joy? Think of anything like that, anything that brings you joy right now, but at one point in your life, you're really afraid of? Uh, Can I, uh, children, right? (laughs) It's the point in my life where I was pretty terrified of uh, the idea of changing a diaper. And I had great joy the day I changed the last one. Yeah. But uh, if I might tell you uh, one thing in my life, it's, it's this one right here. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Somebody recognized the big bird, right? He's terrifying. No? I say he's terrifying. Look at that. I mean, he's got, he's got a huge beak. Look at that. He's all yellow. That's like the sign of caution, right? Yellow. Got those weird leg things going on. I mean, what's that? I don't know. Anyway, big bird. So I grew up in a house without a television. I know that's impossible for some of you in this, in this room to begin to imagine, like life without a screen. But as part of my parents' uh, parenting strategy, a lot easier back in the dark ages um, to to implement that. Um, But I grew up without a screen. So I did not watch all those familiar children's programs that a lot of people grew up with. I never watched them. So I don't know, sometimes between the age of three and five, my parents decided it was time to, you know, give me a little bit of a cultural education and I, I, some sort of Sesame, Sesame Street program was in town. And so they decided to take me to it. And I'm, I'm super excited. I don't know why I'm excited, right? Because I've never seen Sesame Street. I don't know what it's about, but I'm excited. And, I, uh, and so we walk into the lobby where this is happening. And I, I need to be clear, I really don't remember this. It's kind of a vague feeling. That's something to think about, right? We really, the feelings, we remember feelings a lot more than we even remember images, right? I, I remember the feeling because I walked in and that's what I saw. I nearly passed out. <laughs> I, I was like, what on earth has gone wrong? I've, I've seen birds before. And this is not right. And, and, and Big Bird, you know, comes, hey, let me give you a hug, kid. I don't know that's his real voice, right? I know that's, that's not right. But I'm not good at the Big Bird impression. So anyway, so hey, let me give you, and I'm like, oh, no. I like freaked out. I was like screaming. My parents were probably embarrassed, whatever. And uh, I asked my mom this week, I said, mom, do you happen to have a picture of that, because I remember I'm still living in the day and age, you know, when you have your cell phone and you take pictures. Do you remember back, some of you old enough remember when, it, when you actually had to make every picture count, right? You, you really had to think about it because like there was film, you had 24 exposures or whatever it was, and you better get it right. 
So my mom is like, no, I, I, I don't have any pictures of you where you're crying. And I was like, well, isn't that convenient? Um, but uh, uh, proof that you're a perfect parent, right? So there we go. Always happy. That was my child. But no, so she said, yeah, I don't have a picture of you. So uh, being the kind of pastor that I am, I go all out for my sermon illustrations. And so, <laughs> so I went and found Big Bird this week because I will spare no time or expense to bring you the perfect sermon illustration. And uh, so, so I recreated to the best of my ability. I know, I guess I, if I'd really been all in, I would have shaved my beard. I just didn't think I had enough time to grow it back between yesterday and today. So um, that's, that's an actual reproduction, pretty close to the authentic what happened when I saw Big Bird, terrified, terrified of Big Bird. Now, the funny thing is, this last week, our family was actually having a discussion about who our favorite Sesame Street character is. And uh, my daughter suggested that probably Oscar the Grouch was my favorite. Now, we're not going to get in this sermon into why she might have been suggesting that, but she suggested that might be my favorite. And I said, and without really even thinking, I said, no, no, Big Bird's my favorite. Isn't that crazy? Like, as a small child, terrified the first time I met Big Bird. But today, Big Bird is my favorite Sesame Street character. And, and like you, here on the third row, I don't know why anybody would be scared of him. He's awesome, right? Very cool. Exactly. But, you know, back then he terrified me. I want to suggest to you that, um, let's get that one out. There we go. Yeah. I want to suggest to you that sometimes in life, our greatest fears can turn into our greatest joys. I want to go one step further and suggest to you that because we have, we have joy, because Jesus reigns over our lives. I want to suggest to you that when God appears in our life, our first reaction is usually fear. But as we understand who God is, our fears will be turned to joy. And lest you think you're some sort of unusual case, I want you to open your Bibles to the book of Luke. And what we see when we start looking at the Christmas story that we're all very familiar with, and by the way, this is actually an Old Testament phenomenon as well, but we see it in the book of Luke very apparently. There's a priest by the name of Zacharias who he and his wife are very old and they aren't able to have kids. And an angel shows up and says, you're going to have a son. His name is going to be John. And he's going to be the one that prepares the way for the coming Messiah. And what is Zacharias' first reaction to that angel showing up? The Bible says he was greatly troubled. He was very afraid. He was afraid. Is that Zachariah? There's another woman named Mary. Uh, a young lady, not married, who an angel shows up to and says, you're going to have a child. And what's Mary's reaction? Fear. Greatly troubled. And then in the text that I want to show you now, Jesus is born, angels show up, and what's the reaction of the shepherds? Well, let's, let's read about it. That night there were shepherds in the, that were staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. And they all said, oh, this has been what we've been waiting for. Let it soak in, Jesus. Thank you for this. Oh, this is the best day ever. Nope. That's not what the text says. They were terrified. They were terrified. But the angel reassured them, do not be afraid, he said, I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, is born, born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. I love this text. The shepherd's first reaction, like everybody, it seems, that really encounters the glory of the Lord, whether it's radiating out of an angelic being, or whether it's Jesus standing up in the storm and calming it, the reaction is, whoa, wait a minute. They were terrified. These shepherds were terrified of what they were seeing. And so what's heaven's reassurance to us 
when it shows up, you don't need to be afraid. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. So what's the reason for joy? Jesus is born. Jesus is here. Jesus is in your life now. That's the good news. By the way, when you see that, it says, I bring you good news. It's the same word that's used for gospel. Have you heard of the gospel? Gospel literally means the good news. But the gospel, when we talk about the gospel, it is good news. And yet, so many times when the gospel gets shared, our first reaction is fear. What? You're asking what of me? You want what from me? You need me to hang out with who? You need me to go where? But the good news brings great joy to all people. And as I was thinking about it this week, I was thinking, well, what's the opposite of, of fear? And I thought, you know, being afraid, the opposite is probably peace, right? But in this text, what, what we find is that the angel actually puts joy as the opposite of fear. Don't be afraid. Instead, experience joy. And it really started to make sense to me because I think that the opposite of fear is a sense of not just peace, but peace and happiness in the midst of a chaotic world. That's truly ununderstandable. And what I I want to really understand in this text is the difference between happiness and joy. I want you to think about it for a second. What is the difference from a Christian standpoint? What's the difference between happiness and joy? Because the, the, the angel doesn't say, I brought you good news that's going to give you happiness. He said, I bring you good news that is joy to all people. So what's the difference between joy and happiness? Can I make a suggestion to you? Happiness has to do with what's happening around you. It's a lot less controllable. If life is good and things are going the way they should, then we're happy. You know, the the people who wrote the Declaration of Independence called it the pursuit of happiness, right? Happiness is something that as humans that we pursue. But I want to suggest to you that if we're Christians... We believe that joy is not something you pursue, but that's something that has been gifted to you by God. And it is there for you regardless of the circumstances of life that you find yourself in. Can we just be honest for a minute? Christmas is not the happiest time of the year. What we see in this world is that... um, Sorry, squirrel. Um, Just kicked in there. Sorry. Um, I couldn't help myself. Um, So what we see in the world is this idea that unless your circumstances are good, you can't have joy. And Christmas, for many people, is not the happiest time of the year. It's a time where uh, many people reflect on the people that they want to be with that are no longer with them. Whether those people have been taken due to sickness or death, or broken relationships that are no longer together, families that are split apart where one of the parents doesn't get the kids on on Christmas Day and the other parent does, and next year it'll be the reverse. It can be a hard time of year when, when you see what you want to do for your children versus what you're able to do for your children. It can be a hard time for a lot of kids when they go back to school And they see what other kids have and what they don't. Christmas can be a difficult time of year if we're really honest about it. And yet what we see here is that the Bible is telling us that we can have joy no matter what the circumstance. No matter where we find ourselves, joy is not dependent on what's happening to me, but what has been done already for me. You hear me? 
It's not dependent on what's happening to me. It's dependent on what has already happened for me. But for a lot of us, when we first encounter God, when we encounter that radiance of God shining out in our life, we're terrified. We're scared. Like little three or four-year-old Ken seen Big Bird for the first time. What is this radiant stuff? What is this thing? You know, for me, coming to Whole Life Church six months ago was scary. You may not, I don't know how many of you know the story of me coming here, but I didn't apply to be here. Somebody put my name in. Yeah, well, yeah, you can send them a thank you note. (laughs) It was somebody that kind of shocked me that they put my name in. I wasn't sure whether to take it as a compliment or an insult. (laughs) Because they texted me and said, hey, without your permission, I put your name in because they're looking for this person. I hope that you're okay with that. And because of my respect for that person, I left my name in. But I had just, uh, we were just wrapping up a um, million dollar plus renovation of the church that I was at. I want you to know before I came here, I got to preach on that renovated worship center twice. And that was hard. (laughs) Because um, a lot of time and effort had gone into that renovation project from raising the money to seeing it through. And so I wasn't really looking to, to be making a transition. And yet, God showed up and said, hey, I've got another plan for you, Ken. And I said, I don't know about that. I don't, I don't like the idea of going to a church where there's been a pastor for 37 years, and they like him. Because <laughs> one of the things you always know as a leader is it is far better to come after somebody who's stunk at their job. Because <laughs> there's only up. But if you come after a legend, there's mostly down. (laughs) So thank you for your kindness to me so far. (laughs) Okay, thank you. But it was scary. It was scary for me to do that. I know what I have back at Madison campus. I don't know what's going to happen here. And you would think that with all the different things I've gone through in my life, all the different times I've had to trust God, that it would be easier, but it wasn't. It wasn't easier. It was a difficult decision. But God urges us to overcome our fear. He says, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Why? Because Jesus brings joy to every circumstance, every situation, and every person. Remember what it said in verse 10? I bring you good news that's for all people. That means whether you're short or tall, whether you're underweight, just the right weight, or a little overweight. No matter where you're at, as far as the pigmentation of your skin goes, whether it's light, perfectly baked, right? That's what my uh, friends in the, uh, in the islands used to tell me. God baked us perfectly. You're underbaked, Ken. <laughs> no matter what shade you are, the good news is for you. No matter what your ethnicity is, no matter what culture you come from, no matter what lifestyle you find yourself in currently, the good news is for you. The good news that will bring joy into your life like nothing else you've ever experienced if you trust God to help you overcome your fear of what he's asking of you. Our joy is not found in the circumstances around us. It's found in our deliverer. The one who's going to make all things right someday. And today, 
he is going to give us what we need for today. What we need for today. Sometimes not a lot more. Sometimes it's just enough. But he will give us the joy that we need to make it. Our joy is found in Jesus. When we look at those verses, the Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem. And that is the reason for joy in our lives. Look at the three, the three titles that the angel gives Jesus in this passage. He calls him this in verse 11. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord. So Savior, Messiah, and Lord. Why did he do that? Why don't you just say your Savior's been born today? Or why don't you just say your Messiah's been born today? Or why didn't he say just your Lord has been born today? Because the angel is trying to go ahead and point out to you and me today, as well as the shepherds back then, that Jesus has three very important roles in our life to play. The first one is Savior. In order to save somebody, they need to be a little lost, don't they? There's a few of us today who don't think we need saving, right? And it's not usually the person who shows up who we would label the sinner. It would be usually the people that sit in church a lot. They don't think they need a Savior because we've, we've, we're taken care of. I need you to know no matter how long you've sit, sat in a pew or a seat, you still need a Savior every single day, every single moment. There's no point where you don't need a Savior, nor will there be a point where you don't need a savior. I'll say that one again. You will not perfect yourself to the point where you don't need Jesus anymore. You will always need Jesus. I believe in heaven I'm going to need Jesus. I'm not saying I'm sinning. I'm saying I still think I'm going to need Jesus. Every hour I need thee is how the song goes. So that's his first role, to save us. We need to recognize we need saving. But isn't there a little bit of joy? Have any of you come close to drowning? If you've ever come close to drowning, there's a little bit of joy when your nose gets above the water. Yeah. (laughs) And if you believe that you're saved today, there should be a little bit of joy knowing your nose is above the water because Jesus has reached down from heaven and been there for you. The second role is Messiah. It says your Savior, the Messiah. What does Messiah mean? Well, we think, well, isn't that Savior? This isn't that, no, it means something a little bit different than sometimes the way that we think of it. It does mean, some, it does mean somebody who comes to save his people, but that literally translates out as the anointed one. And in Jesus' time, that kind of a phrase always applied to two groups of people. It referred to kings, royalty, they were called the anointed one, or to the high priest. And it's in that role that I believe that that the angel is speaking, Jesus as high priest, the anointed one. You see, each one of us need a high priest. What was the role of the high priest? The high priest was the representative of the people to God. He went before God on behalf of the people. And so we have Jesus who saves us from our sins, but we also have Jesus that goes before us to God, that ministers on our behalf, that works with us in our spiritual condition, that seeks to help us grow spiritually, the anointed one. The final thing that Jesus is called is Lord. If you don't know what that means, it means somebody who's in charge of you. And I know some of us don't like that idea too well. I think I uh, told my parents more than once, I can do it myself. I remember I couldn't wait early on in my career to finally be the guy that was at the top of the heap instead of the guy at the bottom, to be the person making the decisions instead of the person that the decisions were being made on, right? Right? And now I find myself in a place in my career where the buck often stops with me. and I don't like it as much as I thought I would. I really enjoy it when I can kick, the, kick it up to the next in line. 
because there's a lot of responsibility that comes with having to be in charge. You know, it's a good thing that God is in charge of us. He made us, he understands us. And when we let him be Lord over our life, it can be terrifying at first because he asks a lot of scary things of us. He asks us to trust him when life isn't going the way we think it ought to, that he'll take care of it for us. But it's a good thing to let Jesus be Lord of our life. I've found that my greatest joy is not when I'm trying to run my life, but when I'm allowing God to run my life. Didn't say there was never terror, (laughs) just said that my greatest joy comes out of that time when I know that God is in charge. For instance, I know God brought me here. And I'm feeling a lot of joy being here. Let me tell you, I am. This has been a God thing to be here. I feel joy. But there have been other times where God's called me places where I've had to have the joy in my heart because it's been rough. Family, the radiance of God in our life, just like with those shepherds, can be a terrifying thing. But if we trust God when he says, don't be afraid, I have good news, well then, and we overcome our fears, well, then we're going to run and find this little baby that's been born. And we will think this is God with us. This is a joy that can't be taken away from me. Circumstances of life may change, but the fact that Jesus has been born cannot be changed. The fact that Jesus has atoned for my sins cannot be changed. It's permanent. And therefore, our joy is found in our deliverer. You know, one of the the incredible things about this story is that when the shepherds leave, they go, they find the baby. And you know what they do? They tell everybody that they find about what they've seen. They share the good news. Are you that way? I, um, I, I tell you what, when I find a restaurant that I like, my, my favorite thing is to tell somebody else about it. What's even better is when I get to take them for the first time and eat there with them. And I'm just sitting there, I hope you like it. Do you like it? Oh, oh yeah. this is amazing, isn't it? If I can get that excited about sharing food, how about the bread of life? How about when I share the good news about who Jesus is? Family, there's a lot of people that are getting away from worshiping together. They're thinking I can have my own Christian experience all by myself and kind of customize it to what I want. But I want to suggest to you that true joy comes in community. And not just the kind of community with the people that think the same way I do, but the community with people who don't think the same way that I do. People who force me to think a little bit more deeply about preconceived ideas that I have. People that force me out of the comfortable rut that I like to find myself in. But that's uncomfortable because sandpaper always is. And yet it takes the roughness out and leaves something smooth and beautiful afterwards. Family, let's share the gospel, the good news with our world. Let's share that God doesn't have to be feared, that he is for everyone as he reigns as our deliverer high priest, and master. Let the whole world sing for joy because you govern the nations with justice and guide the people of the whole world. We can sing for joy because God governs with justice and he'll guide us if we allow him. This Christmas, it's simple. We have joy because Jesus reigns over our life. All right. Anyone not enjoy that? And any chance you guys are free next week? Any, any possibility? No, that's a no. Sorry. Well, I can just say that today. We've been blessed with amazing worship music, drama, bad, big bird impressions. I mean, we've really had the gamut today of pretty much the whole thing. And I wanted to tell you, when it comes to the podcast this week, watch social media. I am going to find a picture. You asked your mom for a picture. I have a picture of me with the coolest Big Bird 
stocking cap where the meatball was Big Bird's head and beak, eyes, the whole thing. That's pretty amazing. I, I can't wait to see that. Yeah, yeah, right? That's going to be awesome. You, you might be a little afraid. Uh, I might be. <laughs> you might have to do the podcast via phone again you this week. You might have to call in again this week. Well, I'm pretty sure we're going to do the podcast in person this week. So you still have a chance. If you're in-house, use your phone. If you're online watching, send in your questions. We do have a couple that we're going to hopefully get to this morning. And anything else, we will catch on the podcast on Wednesday. Our first question is from Isaiah, who said, If Lord means in charge, why does he give us a choice of whether to follow him or not? Yeah, um, because to not do so would mean that he created uh, robots. Um, and while you can be in charge of robots, um, they don't particularly provide meaningful relationships. And God is a relational God. And so um, free will uh, in our faith tradition is a very important part uh, of who God is and what he does and what he gives us. And I think it's a really beautiful thing that, that the God of all the universe would would create beings that he knew wouldn't do what he wanted, and yet he had a plan to deal with it and a plan to redeem us. Um, and so for me, that's a, it's just a beautiful thing. Well, why can't I choose then? Like maybe the things that I know I really want him to change, but I've got a few of my own things that I'm pretty sure I can take care of. So maybe we can broker some kind of a 50-50... No, well, that's between you and God. If you're that way, you can broker. <laughs> but you're not. But you're not recommending. I, what I would say is that um, I think I think the decisive question in life is is really it's the hardest thing and the easiest thing. the The decisive life question is my way or God's way. Yeah. Th- that's do I choose to do things the way that I know that God is calling me to do them, or do I think that I'm smarter than God? Well, when you put it that way, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I'm not smarter than God. No, you're, you're not. Good. We're in, I'm in good company then. Maybe you all are too. I really like this question. Um, came from someone anonymously. I want to be joyful, but my fear is more about seeming insensitive to those around me who are struggling during this time of year. How do I find that balance? Yeah, I don't think that joy necessarily is something that um, it means that we're dancing all around and jumping up and down and... Um, but I think that joy is something that's it's actually far more transcendent. And I think actually true joy in our own lives, when we encounter people who are going through it, it doesn't make them feel worse. It actually makes them feel better. Mm, okay. It's not a rubbing, life is going the way I want it to go. Too bad life isn't going the way you want it to go. But rather it's a, hey, I've got this peace and joy in my life that you too can have. And so I think that that's um, just a beautiful thing to be sharing with people at this time of year who are legitimately hurting. Hurting. Maybe that's a little bit on us then to make sure that we're clear about where our joy is coming from. Yeah. Because I think we look at social media and we look at those around us and we can, especially like you said, you know, kids going to school and seeing what they don't have that other kids do. But maybe us being more vocal about God is good to me and whatever I have, I owe to him. And that's my joy. Yeah. God's goodness to us is not reflected in the stuff, and in stuff that we have. It's reflected in Jesus yeah. and what Jesus has done for us. That's God's goodness. And hopefully that attitude shows. I hope so. I think so. I think that if, um, if we were to point people towards Jesus, to, if we were to point people towards Jesus, um, that that would go a long way in healing some of the pain and suffering in the world as opposed to pointing them to the stuff that we have and that we're doing. Well, I think we're really blessed here. And I just wanted to say just personally, when you told the story about um, the person that put your name in the hat, whoever you are, if you're watching, thank you like a thousand percent for making sure Ken's name was on the list to come here because we've been blessed so much with your presence and your messages and just your leadership so far. And we've heard a lot through the Love Is series and people that have shared it and the response. 
And it's really been an impactful thing. So I hope that coming into Christmas, we've, we've kind of went through and defined that love. And now we have something, hopefully this Christmas season, that we can really share from the heart. Yeah, true love brings joy. True love brings joy. That's it. Any questions that we didn't get to today, we will catch on the podcast. It's every Wednesday morning, wherever you can listen to podcasts. This is Whole Life. It's Ken and myself and Pastor Jeff. And this week, I think we're finally all going to be back together again. Exciting. Exciting. Excellent. Thank you, Good to see you. (laughs) It's good to be back. Yeah. I want to invite uh, the uh, folks in the back, if you would go ahead and put the uh, slide up of the, uh, of the concert that's going to be tonight, just so you can have that in the background. We're going to leave that up uh, as we close out here. Just want to remind you, 7 o'clock this evening, Undivided, right back here. You do need to have tickets, so you'll need to go to uh, undivided.ticketleap.com to go ahead and get those tickets if you uh, are planning on being here this evening. I hope you will. Um, so just a reminder of that. And then... Next week, we continue our Simply Christmas series with simple gifts, more than a song. If you don't know the song, uh, it's it's more than a song, simple gifts. So we're going to be talking about gifts. Um, I gave Tammy a heart attack during first service because I said that we are going to be giving out gifts to everybody who shows up next week. Um, I don't know why she's upset. I, it was uh, Danny who I said was going to pay for it. So, I mean, we're, we're going to, anyway. <laughs> um, so, there may or may not be gifts next week. I'm just saying. There may or may, and it possibly it could be the gift of, you know, some good music and hopefully a word from God, right? That'd be a gift too, right? That's what I was thinking of first service. So, if you see anybody who's at first service, just, you know, make sure they know that it might not be a new BMW or something like that, all right? in case there's any confusion on that. All right, let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we uh, love you. Um, Wow, we're just grateful for you. Thank you for giving us joy in the form of Jesus. Help us to celebrate that, that this Christmas season. Help us to share that good news with a terrified world, a world that's very fearful right now, but needs your joy in their hearts. We pray these things in your name. Amen. All right, family, I love you. Have a great week. Go love your world, all right? Hi, this is Randy McGray, podcast producer and host here at Whole Life Church. Loving people into a lifelong friendship with God is our mission at the Whole Life Church, and our podcasts, Speaking of Grace, and its companion, 15 with Andy, Randy, and Jeff, are designed to help facilitate conversations that help us grow together in that pursuit. Now that you've heard the message for this week, Don't forget to check out the Whole Life Takeaways for this message. Swipe up in today's show notes and join the conversation. Speaking of conversations, each Wednesday morning we take a closer look at the week's message. That's right, the one you just listened to. We discuss practical ways to apply spiritual lessons and ask honest questions about the issues we face as Christians. All focused through the lens of grace. Your voice is a welcomed addition to that conversation. We encourage your thoughts and your questions by sending a voicemail or text to 407-965-1607 or send an email to podcast at wholelife.church. You can find everything podcast related on our website, wholelife.church slash podcast. And plan on spending every Tuesday evening and Wednesday morning with us as we bring you the Whole Life Church inspiration you love straight into your headphones. Thanks for listening and have a great week.